Hey guys, it's Marina with Artworthy Life, where I teach Christ-centered art journaling that gets you into God's Word every day. Happy Friday, everybody! Welcome to another art journal demo. Today is going to be fast and furious. We will have a lot going on, so I hope you will stay tuned all the way to the end because I'm going to be sharing um, a sneak peek of some up of an upcoming class we have coming up, <laughs> and it is going to be taught by a dear friend of mine who is the most incredible artisan, and she has generously uh, agreed to come to Artworthy Life and teach you guys. So I just want to let you know that's coming up at the end. I will show it to you, but I want to go ahead and do our art demo as well. And i um, super, super glad to have you guys on. So Today, I want to go ahead and start off with some scripture, and um, but I'm also going to share something else with you guys because um, I just thought, I thought that this would be a, a fun day to share a little bit extra. So I'm going to share something else that's been encouraging to me, uh, kind of uplifting um, in my faith walk as well, and that's the most important thing, right? To start in the Word of God and start with the Lord at the beginning of the day. Hi, Bonnie. Happy Friday. Ha Hello. Happy afternoon again. Um, I'm so glad you're watching. If you are watching right now for the first time, please drop a fire emoji in the comments so I know that you are, and please tell me where you're watching from. If you have watched before, go ahead and tell me where you're watching from so I can see you, because if you don't comment, sometimes I can't see you. Alrighty, so first of all, I'm going to start with the Word of God because that's the best place to start. And I'm just going to read um, from the Armor of God passage. I'm just going to read one, one um, uh, verse from that. I'm going to make sure I only read one verse because, yes. Okay, so I'm just going to read one. And I, I want to read this one because it encourages you to uh, think about what we have in what we have to fight against in this world. So the ver uh, the the passage starts with be strong in the Lord. So be strong in the Lord is the context. And in verse 12, it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I am going to read two verses. <laughs> Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. And I love that scripture because it reminds us that our whole purpose on this earth is not to be worried about the physical so much, although we are very physical people. So there's, you know, definitely an element of uh, tangible reality here, obviously, but we wrestle against, not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness. And so the battle is in the mind. We've heard that before, right? So I really uh, have been enjoying doing some um, inten intentional reading and stuff to refresh my mind. I thought I would read you a prayer that I just recently found in a book that I just finished. Okay, I'm going to stop and say hello to everybody because I'm seeing tons of comments come in. Hi, mom. Watching from Tennessee. Hello, Terry. Yeah, so mom is with my peepaw right now, which is my mom's dad. So hi, mom. And she sent a bunch of the I love you signs. That's cool. Hi, Terry. Thanks for watching from Vanita and Pam from Michigan, which is apparently cold. Is it still snowing there or is it? I don't I can't remember when you said it snowed last. Okay. Oh, Bonnie's saying hi to Terry and to Pam. Oh, is Pam watching? Oh, yeah. Sorry. That's who I just read. Sorry. Pam, hello. And anybody else? Oh, Ta Terry. So these are mostly art journalers on here. I'm so glad you guys are watching. This is so fun. Okay. Real quick, I just want to share you, with you the prayer that I read out of this book. Now, the prayer was not written by the people who wrote this book, but this is a book called Shine Bright. And um, <clears throat> I was joking with a friend of mine that I'm terrible. I like never finish devos. I never finish devo books. The ones that have like 40 days or 90 days or 30 days or whatever. I never finish them. I don't know that I've ever finished one. Even um, we, like, yeah, I've never finished one. And my mom loves them. So thanks, mom. She always gets them for me. I always feel terrible because I've never finished any of them. So this year, when I got this book, along with an, a set from the same authors, I decided I was going to actually set a tracker on my phone to read this every day. So, um, you know, I, I always say, well, I should say I, I stole this from my friend. This, wait, how? Do, this is how she does it. This is a girl that teaches our Bible class. This is not the truth. This is the truth. This is the Bible. 
this gets you into the truth, but this is ultimately the truth. So we never endorse 100% a book. I, I don't ever 100% endorse a book because it's not the word of God, but a book is also really encouraging. And this one was really fun. So this is by Kristen Clark and Bethany Beal. It's called Shine Bright. And they have a ministry called Girl Defined. And then um, uh, I will read you a prayer that they didn't write, but was encouraging to them. And I wrote it down, whoops, in my teeny tiny little book where I write my fun prayers that I find or things that I want. So it is by Betty Scott Stam. And this is what it says. I just think it's really encouraging. It's encouraging just talking about the armor of God, putting the armor of God on and, and letting God take care of those things. So here's what it says. And you know what? We can just pray today. Uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and pray this. Lord, I give up my own plans and purposes, all my own desires, hopes, and ambitions, and I accept thy will for my life. I give up myself, my life, my all, utterly to thee, to be thine forever. I hand over to thy keeping all of my friendships, all the people whom I love are to take second place in my heart. Fill me now and seal me with thy spirit. Work out thy whole will in my life at any cost, for to me to live is Christ. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love that prayer. I think it's really cool. Um, I would highly recommend you to like later on come back and watch the replay and write it down. Slow that down and write it down because man, I've been I've been praying that prayer and I just feel like it is so encouraging to give that up to God. All righty. Oh, hi, Tammy. I'm so glad you're on. Thank you for joining today. Thank you guys for letting me pause for just a little bit in the morning and share with you a little extra. Um, normally I just share scripture, but I thought I just got to share that prayer with you guys. All right, let's go ahead and get into some things I want to share. So we're going to go ahead and do the, some art journaling. And um, I want to show you um, a little bit more of the techniques that I was doing in um, the prior days that I, that I had uh, referenced. So like this one we did last week, but I had also done this little church building and this little church building. So I thought it'd be fun to do another, um, church building today, but a slightly different style. So this is a church that is actually nearby, um, in Eugene and we pass it on our way to Vanita. Uh, it's a sweet little church and I love it. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that with you guys today. And then I will show you two different things. I'll show you the class that I have coming up and um, some a sneak peek inside of the art journal uh, get started or sorry <laughs> inside of the welcome kit that comes if you become an art journal member okay that's what I'm trying to say <laughs> so I will show you that and let me grab my water real quick okay so this is um, gonna go pretty quick but I wanted to show you just another way that you can paint some churches so if you have a church building you want to trace and um, you've taken a photo of it or whatever and you don't know exactly how to get it transferred onto paper or um, how to get the, the photo to work well for you I just finished a live inside the group art journal DIY and I specifically talked about how to use your personal photos as a reference photo and how to get the lighting to work out right so Go check that out. That's exactly how I got this image. I did those exact things that I show in that video. So go check that out if you're interested. And you just have to join the group. It's a free group. So just go to Artworthy Life Hit Groups, and it's under there, Art Journal DIY, or Art Journaling DIY. <laughs> Somebody tell me what it's called. <gasps> Hi, Daniel. Good morning. Happy Friday. Uh -huh, nice. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do um, a slightly different color scheme today, but I just thought it would be fun because. Um, I have been painting churches with flowers around them, but I thought it would be fun today to incorporate some snow because we are going skiing today. Well, actually I'm going snowboarding today and, uh, it'll be interesting. It'll be fun. It's a new thing, a new thing for me. And I'm excited. So I thought I'd paint some snow today. So this church is actually white in reality and I'm going to just stick with that. But what I want to do is make the background kind of fade out to to um, a foggy kind of hazy, beautiful sky. And it'll also make the rest of the page kind of fill out a little bit. So I'm gonna wet the background and I'm just taking a size 10 round brush. It doesn't really matter what size. In fact, I could probably go with a bigger one. I am gonna switch to a flat brush and quickly get this wet around here. Oops, make sure my brush is totally clean and wet all that around the church. And you want it 
like damp, but not dripping wet. You don't want um, super big puddles. But I do want all around the church to be nice and wet. And I'm going to leave the bottom half for now because I just want to color the background mostly right now. And I'm going to um, do this a little simpler. I, I always say this. You can always take more time with your paintings if you want to. But I'm showing you how to get an art journal done in a few minutes because you don't really most people don't have a ton of time to do a whole bunch every day but i just thought it would be fun to show you um a quick way to get a really pretty painting done and um, not worry about it taking up your whole day so i'm going to take a little bit of blue and i don't even have my i don't even have my palette out so <laughs> i'm using up um so let me see if you guys can see that uh where is my thingy Okay, yeah, here's my thing. I'm not even using my palette right now. I am using um, the color that's left over in my mixing palette, my mixing plate. So when I reference colors, just know they can be really flexible. They do not have to be specific. This is a really soft, smoky blue. And I'm just going to take that blue and water it down a lot. And then I'm going to add it to the area behind this church. And I'm just going to drop it in where I just wet that area and let it kind of fade out behind the church building like this. So just kind of let it be this hazy thing going on behind the church. If it starts to not blend, that's probably a sign you don't have enough water going on. So I'm going to make sure my page is nice and wet so that that doesn't happen. I'm going to put a lot of water around the outer edges so that it starts to spread. And then you can tell those edges stay nice and soft. I'm just kind of pulling some of that blue out. So it just instantly shapes the church. You can see the church now looks nice and white. I can take some of the blue and sort of create a little hill over here. But um, the background is not as important right now. So it doesn't need to be perfect. And then I'm just going to take water and make sure the, the blue fades out into the background like that. Okay, I'm going to grab a little bit more of this blue, maybe create some little shadows and clouds over here. I don't know, maybe foggy looking clouds, something like that. And then I'm going to take a darker blue and just come right along the church and darken up that edge. I'm using the same brush and just darkening that up. And I'm going to take water and just help that push around really well. You can add a little water but you don't want to add too much because you don't want tide lines forming all over your little sky. Okay so I'm just getting that down like that. And I'm going to add a little bit of bluish purple to make my sky not all just one color. So I'm adding a little bit of purple to my blue and then just coming back and doing a little bit more. Okay, so there it is. That's our background. And once we have that, now you can see the church building and everything else will just fall into place. I'm going to make sure the edge of my church is nice and crisp. So I'm just going to paint in those edges, making sure that the color comes all the way up to the side of the church because that'll help it look more clean and neat. Whoops. Not that it needs to be perfect, but it'll help. Okay. So I'm just cleaning up that edge. And now what I'm going to do is um, just paint it in as if I was coloring in a coloring book. So I'm going to take my, um, I want this to stay a nice soft white color. So I'm going to mostly use blues and um, the same color scheme to fill in a church building. So this church has some shadow going on like underneath these little eaves. I'm just going to take some purple and go along that edge. That purple is more brown than I thought it was. I'm going to grab a little bit of purple. I'm literally using only leftover colors from my, from my palette. So these do not have to be exact. If you're following along, just use whatever you have. So all I'm doing is filling in the walls of the church with a slight tinted pan with some purple in it. 
Um, and I think I'll go all the way up to the steeple. Just leave it like that. So that's about all that needs. And now I'm going to take, um, let me see if I want to, I think, I think I want the roof to look like it has snow on it. So I'm going to take some blue and just do like the edge of the roof so you can see the roof, but it doesn't um, overpower it. So I'm going to kind of go up along, well, let me make sure that's dry. Okay, I'm going to go up along the edges of this roof with some grayish blue and maybe along the bottom of this roof like that. That might be a little too much. I love watercolors. You can just sweep it with your fingers if it's not where you want it. Okay, there we go. And I'm just going along the bottom of the roof line. I'm also going to go over here because there's a roof coming off that direction and go up underneath this one as well. This one might end up with a little bit more shadow because it's on that side of the building. And so because I'm doing more shadow there, I'm going to add a little bit more shadow on this edge as well. So look how I'm using the same color scheme. See how the roof is starting to look like it has snow on it? So as that's wet, while that's wet, I'm just going to come up, come with a little bit darker blue and come up along the underside of the roof. Again, this side of the roof as well. This one as well. So anywhere where I just put blue. Remember when you're adding darker shadows, you just want to add them where there's already shadow. I'm going to give this side of the roof a little bit of color just so you can see that there's two different sides. And then I think I'm going to create a little shadow on the back side of this roof because there would be a, a slight shadow even if there was snow. All right. Now I don't want to overdo this because I like I said I wanted this to be something you could paint really fast. So I'm going to quickly paint in the windows with a dark blue. I'm going to use the same kind of blue. Um, I'm using kind of like a smoky stormy blue. And that's what I'm going to do to fill in these windows. And all I'm going to do is just paint them in these little squares, which work out really well for a, um, to make the window kind of appear. I don't think I want it that dark though. So I'm going to pull some of that off. It's a little darker than I want. And I'm using the very tip of this brush. This brush is Princeton Velvet Touch. Um, it's called Long Round and it has a really fine tip. So I like it because if I'm wanting to go fast, I don't have to keep switching brushes. It's just very versatile. I can do tiny stuff, I can do big stuff, but you do have to have a little bit more like brush control, they call it. You just have to be more careful with your brush strokes is all. And it's not that hard to do that. Okay, and I'm not even worried about my brush strokes because like I just smudged that one and because it's so far back, it's not even going to matter. I'm going to do a little bit of a shadow in the doorway so that you can see that there's a door happening over there. And it doesn't even have to be perfect. I'm just going to smudge that one. And then there's a window up here. So I'm going to take that same blue and come in and do that little window. It's like a diamond shape window. It's really cute. And then there's some little um shutters or something up here that look like cute little windows i've actually painted this church before so if you're interested in another color option for this church i painted it with sunflowers last year so you can go check that out i'm pretty sure i did that on a live a public live so you guys if you're interested can go check that out let's see oh thank you bonnie for typing that out, out art journaling diy um, Tammy, we don't have snow here, but there's plenty of snow on the mountains. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, did anybody see my, uh, my announcement yesterday that the art journal club is open again? So leave like a, um, let's see, what could you put? Leave a, is there a book emoji? Maybe you should put a book emoji since it's like an art journal club. That's probably, or maybe there is a journal. I bet there's a journal emoji or a pencil. See what you find and drop that in the comments if you saw my announcement that the Art Journal, uh, are the, the <laughs> Artworthy Journal Club is open again. I'm so excited about that. Uh, we, we don't open the doors very often because I like to give everybody a warm welcome when they come. So it's really fun when the doors do open because we like to welcome everybody and have a little welcome party. And it's always like a special event. So I'm excited about that. That's happening this week and it's only until tonight. Oh, Bonnie found a paintbrush 
and a book of some kind. That's awesome. Super cute emojis. I love it. Um, yeah, so if you are interested in doing a little bit more art on a daily basis or on a weekly basis, and uh, you're interested in using that to deepen your walk with God, hopefully strengthen your prayer life and your uh, your time in the Word of God, we would love to have you. It's been really, really fun, and I've enjoyed it, and I have some really great stuff planned for the summer so this is a great time to join if you're wanting to check it out. So it's actually only open until midnight tonight. And then we have to close the doors because I can't leave them open all the time and give everybody special attention the way I want to. So go ahead and um, leave me a message in the comments or click the link in uh, the last post I made yesterday. So it's just go straight to the Artworthy Journal or, or Artworthy Life page and you can click the link in that post and it will take you straight to the page. If you don't find it, just send me a message and I will do my best to get that to you. Um, but yes, the deadline for that is this evening um, tonight at midnight. All right, so you can see I'm adding a little bit more shadows and I'm just gonna take my brush and create like little blue shadows underneath those um, darkest darkest shadows of the um, roof line and that will pretty much finish up what I'm wanting to do with the church there. I'm going to add a little bit here and maybe just a little bit on the back there and that's really all it needs. It doesn't need a whole lot and you can tell just it looks right even though we didn't do a, a ton to it. So isn't that cute? All right so all I'm going to do at this point is add some flowers to it because I've been really enjoying doing roses and things. And I know it's a winter painting, but I thought it would be really fun to still add some flowers to it. So I'm going to take some smoky gray and I'm going to do, well, actually I'm going to start out with water. So super clean brush. And I'm going to do the edge of the flower like this. Just kind of draw the edge out. And then I'm going to start bringing it in and swirling it around. Now, I know you guys can't see this. We just did a demo on this inside the Artworthy Journal Club. Um, but I'm basically just using water and drawing the rows uh, freehand with water. And now that I have the shape I want, now I'm going to come back in and drop in some blue. And that will create a rose shape that is really soft and subtle. It's very abstract and beautiful. Okay, now I'm gonna add even darker blue. So that more smoky blue in the very center of that. I'll give it some darker shadows. And you can kind of see that rose start to form. Does anybody have a favorite color of rose? Oh, Terry found some emojis. She found a a hand holding a pencil and a palette, a paint palette and a paintbrush and a journal. Way to go, you guys. I didn't even know that all of those existed. I didn't know there was a little yellow journal. That's so cute. Love it. Okay, so there's a rose there. And then I'm just going to add a slightly more purple rose so they stand out from each other. And I'm just going to use the same kind of purple that I used on the church building. I'll just do another one. Oops, I forgot I need to start with water. Start with water. I the reason I have a hard time um, starting off is because I have I have for the longest time done this technique from the inside out, um, and then just as I was like really wanting to get that soft edge on these flowers, especially having them sit right next to the church like that, I realized I needed to have the edge be like almost just water. Like sometimes it didn't even need to be very um, very what's the word? <laughs> oh, I don't even know. It didn't need to be very crisp. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, so I found that I needed to loosen up that edge a lot to make it kind of blend in with everything. And that means I start from the outside and go in, which is different than I normally do. And I have a hard time remembering my own, my own technique. <laughs> All right. So now I'm adding a little bit more purple coming around toward the center and these are very abstract flowers. I'm letting these be super abstract because I didn't take a whole lot of time to make the church very 
detailed either. So I don't want these to like overpower it or anything because that's the main focus. Adding a little bit more purple to the center again, just to make that stand out more. And then I'm just going to take, uh, I think I showed you guys this last week. I did show you this last week. I'm going to take some darker um, grays, water them down a little bit, and do these like little things that kind of oops, spill out from the base of the church building. They kind of look like wisteria or vines of some kind. I'm just going to let them kind of spill out that way. I don't want too much water. I'm going to sweep up some of that water. And I do them super light to start with because that kind of helps me establish where I want them to be. And then once I get them where I want them, that's pretty good right there, um, then I can darken my color up and just add a little bit more to the edge like that. I really love doing these. They, I don't know why. They just look... Um, like kind of romantic and almost like an Italian villa or something has the little things dripping down everywhere. Okay, so once you have them lightly dripping down like that, dee, ta -da! then you can let that dry and come in with another layer. So I'm going to let that dry. And while it's drying, um, I'm actually going to show you the inside of um let's <laughs> show you the inside show you the contents of our welcome kit that goes to anyone who's a brand new art journal member so let me go ahead and clear my table off here but i want to show you first off what you would get as a brand new art journal member so what i did so i'm having to grab this off the side <laughs> of my my office on the go um what I did is I collected a few things and um, they are things that you wouldn't necessarily buy for yourself, but that make a huge difference when you're first starting off art journaling. You don't necessarily need them. So it's kind of like a little bonus extra, but fun things from me that come to you if you're a brand new art journal member. So if you sign up today, um, you will get this in your first happy mail that goes out to you. All right. So the first thing is you get a sweet little note from me and I always like to write those. So it's really fun. I handwrite each of those and welcome you in. The next thing you get is um, a really fun little extra tool and it is a just a simple gold binder clip. And it's really cute because it's actually, it's not gold, it's um, rose gold. So it's kind of a pinkish color, but what's really fun, you would think this would be like the simplest little tool to have, but it comes in so much hand, it comes in so much handy. That's not good grammar. It comes in handy so much because if you have an art journal like this and you're um, trying to hold it open or move things to the side or whatever, you can uh, oftentimes accidentally like turn the page or your um your pages will be sticking up especially if you you don't have a spiral bound journal and this like holds the pages down when you're painting it really helps if you're painting on the go you can clip the whole thing together you can use it to make your pictures of your art journal look really cute so it's just an extra fun thing that i add to your welcome kit so you'll get that the next thing that i love for you to have on hand is graphite paper and we do so many tracers. Hi, mama. <laughs> we do so many tracers within the Artworthy Journal Club. A tracer is an image that you um, put on top of graphite paper and you trace it and it transfers onto your journal. And this is the graphite paper that you will use for that. And I don't want you to have to buy a whole pack of graph graphite paper right off the bat. So I send you a brand new sheet of paper in your welcome kit as soon as you join the Artworthy Journal Club. Or it comes with You'll get it with your first welcome, um, your first happy mail that comes. The next thing is, um, oh, I don't know which one of these I want to show you first. You get two more things in your welcome kit. I think I'm going to show you this one first because I love pens. The next thing you get is a fun art pen. And I think everybody should have a fun art pen if they're going to start art journaling. Um, you don't need one, but that's why I send it to you because it's kind of a bonus. So this is a dual tip Tombow water-based brush pen. And it comes in a random color. Um, and so you just get you get some some fun color when it comes to you. But it's nice because one end of it has a has a really nice brush tip that you can use to create fun lettering. You can also use it to draw and it makes great brush strokes. 
Um, it's, it's like having a paintbrush, but it's a marker type of um, tool, but it allows you to do brush script lettering, which can really enhance your art journaling right off the bat. And then it also, right along with that, has a really nice fine tip on the other end with the exact same color ink. And so you can um, create borders that match your lettering. It's just a really fun tool to have all around. I always say, um, if you can have one fun pen in addition to a normal writing pen, like, you know, just a normal pen, whatever you have that you like, it's really fun. So that comes in your welcome kit. And then the last thing that comes in your welcome kit is something that I, you know, when I first looked for this um, and, and sourced it for you guys, I had some of you like, um, and some of my art journal members can, can comment if you, if you agree, you were not wanting to use it because it was too pretty. But I always tell my art journal members, use it because it's so fun to have something pretty like this when you're watercoloring. So what that is, is a watercolor cloth. And I think this one is 100% cotton um, and it feels like linen. So when you are using it, it just feels, it feels like you have this luxurious um, napkin that you are using for your watercolor art. And when you get it, it's this beautiful soft pink color. That's the color we have right now. Um, in the future, I have some really fun other colors that will be going in those welcome kits. But right now we're doing this soft, beautiful pink. And when you use it after a long time, you um, I should at some point have all of our art journal members like take a picture of their, their watercolor cloth. But after you use it for a long time, it starts to look like this. And that just means you've loved, 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 loved it. What's amazing is you don't hardly ever have to wash it. And even when I do wash it, I I don't always need to even use soap. Um, you know, if it really gets caked on, you can use soap. But watercolors are amazing. This will just dry. Then I can keep using it over and over and over again. And it has quite a bit of fabric. So it works really well. And it just makes your art journaling time feel so fancy and lovely and I love it. So that all comes this with the note and the graphite paper and this cute rose gold binder clip and um, a sweet um, lettering pen comes in your welcome kit. And that is in your very first um, package that you get as an art journal member. So if you are just joining us, the Artworthy Journal Club is open right now and it will only be open until the end of today. So midnight is when the doors close. So if you have anyone you think might enjoy it. Um, also, this is uh, it, this is a great group for young girls as well. We have a younger girl in our group. If you homeschool and you and you think your girls would enjoy this, um, we don't have any guys right now. We just tend to only have girls. So, uh, but we've been enjoying that. So, if you have any young, young, younger uh, teenage girls, or I think ours is uh, thirteen or fourteen now, um, and that's our youngest member, and she does a great job. So, this is a great addition to homeschooling or um, an extra bonus art project. Uh, I always say if you guys, if you were to sign up for a paint party that I, I teach, I teach paint parties as well. Sometimes those are $25 a person. And in this art journal club, you're getting a paint party, a, a journal demo, another journal demo, a prayer and fellowship meeting and challenges throughout the month, as well as free access to any online events that I have. Um, you get all of that for under $20. So like basically the paint party is, uh, is valued at more than the cost of the membership. So I really recommend if you're interested in adding art to your daily life or adding it to your kids schedule, um, whatever you think, uh, you might enjoy, this is just a great way to do it. So I think you'd, you'd, um, really benefit from at least checking it out. So come join us. It would be fun. All right. Let me show you what comes in your normal happy mail every month. So happy mail comes in a fun little package like this, um, with a beautiful label with your, your name in calligraphy and, uh, a, a nice little fun package. And then, um, and it comes before the month of the theme that it's happening so that your, your materials are there when you need them for that theme. Um, mom is asking if it's midnight Eastern time, it'll be midnight Pacific time. So midnight Pacific standard time. Good question. Thank you. Um, and you know what, if you don't see this live until later and you're like, Oh, I totally missed it. Just send me a message. We might be able to squeeze you in, but I'm really trying to get everybody in by midnight. That way you don't miss anything. And, um, and you can, you can take advantage of all the events that are coming up next. Alrighty. So 
the first thing that I want to show you is um, the scripture focuses, because one of the things that we do in the Artworthy Journal Club is we focus on memorizing scripture. So you get two things that have a scripture on of it, on of it, <laughs> on it. One of them is our scripture card, and it has our scripture for the month that we focus on. And it's really fun because it's colored to the theme of the month. Um, and I'm giving you guys a sneak peek to March's theme. And our theme for March will be um, this Great Commission verse, which is Matthew 28, 19 through 20. And you'll get that as along with a sticker that you can either stick to your mirror, your cell phone cover, you can put it inside your journal, um, somewhere where it's going to remind you to be thinking about that scripture throughout the month. And I really enjoy having those available because you can stick them anywhere and they're really great. The next thing you get is a prayer prompt, and the prayer prompt is just a tool you can use if you have a hard time getting started um, praying, or um, say you just don't always think to pray in the morning, or there's a time of day where you don't pray, or maybe you have a hard time praying every day, period. You could have this on your mirror when you get up in the morning, or you could put it in your, um, you know, your planner or something that you're going to see every day. You can put it next to your coffee maker and just pray this prayer every day. And you've at least taken that moment to, um, you know, to center your focus on the Lord on a daily basis. The, the prayer prompt is always based on our scripture focus. So whatever the scripture focus is, that's the theme for the prayer prompt. Um, and so you'll notice there's a, a, a general theme of being, being a light and sharing the gospel in the prayer prompt for this month. Okay, the next thing you get is a really fun tool. And I mentioned tracers earlier. This is our monthly tracers page. And uh, all you ladies uh, who are already Art Journal members are getting a huge preview of what you're getting next month. This is our themed um, our themed tracers page for the month of March. It has some stuff for St. Patrick's Day and also um, some Bible images for sharing the gospel. And we just have like really cool images for this month. It's really fun. You'll get that. And you use that with your graphite paper to just jumpstart your art journaling. If you're having a funky day where you're like, I can't do anything freehand. It's totally fine. You can just trace something and get some, get some art done. It just gives you um, a head start if you're kind of stuck. Then we also get a lettering page every month. And it's really fun to play with the lettering page because um, I try to give you a phrase that you can actually transfer directly into your journal, but then you can also just practice these fonts and it's really cool. You can always make copies of this or um, I post digital versions of these inside the group every month. So you can go in there and print as many copies as you want um, for your own use or for your personal use as a member of the Artworthy Journal Club. And those are there forever. Uh, you know, as long as the club exists so that you can go back. If you, if you were like, oh man, last April, there was this really cool font and I would love to use it for a greeting card. Where is that? You can just go back to April, open the guide and it's right there and you can just print it and you'll have it right there. It's really cool. The other thing you can do if you're feeling super, super, um, you know, like you want to make it super easy for yourself, you can just literally cut this out and glue it into your art journal or cut it out and um, glue it into into a card that you want to send to someone. So, so many good good uses for that. You also get a really fun tracer for the paint party. So we always do a full size painting. Um, at least at this point, we've been doing full size paintings at the end of the month, and this one is actually for the following month. So we so we've we've um, started doing the paint party early so that you can enjoy your painting throughout the month. And this one will be for the month of April's theme. So you get that as well. And then last but not least, inside your happy mail, you also get a printed calendar that you can stick right above your art area, or you can put it on your refrigerator, whatever you want to do. Um, Terry just told me this week that she also puts the free events on this calendar. So every Friday, this live, she puts that on her calendar as well. And you could also put the live on there that we have inside the group as well. Any other events you have or art events, um, if we have an extra paint party, you could add it to this. But it's really cool because at the bottom of this calendar, it also has the scripture focus again. So the goal of this, this um, group is not just to be doing art every day. It's to be in the word of God. And it's really cool that every, um, every element of our materials that get sent out to you guys are focus on getting you back into the word. And I hope that, um, I hope that the ladies concur that that has been helpful. 
Bonnie says, can't wait. Come join us to create art and get in God's word. Yay! I'm so excited. Yes, I'm excited for anyone who joins us. So please go ahead and join. It'll be fun. Um, you can always just give it a shot. Um, it's $17 a month and that price will not last very long. That's still a discounted price. Um, and I I will be needing to raise that price later on, but I wanted to give you guys a chance to try it out. So there is that price. And if you come in right now at $17, it'll be locked in forever at that price point. So it's a great time to join. <laughs> Alrighty, back to this art journal. And then I will finish this up. And the last thing I'll show you is the class that I kind of coming up and I'm so excited. I'll give you a little sneak peek of that. Okay. Lastly, for this page, um, what I want to do is add one more layer. Where did I put my paintbrush? Here's my paintbrush. Back to this. And again, this is the size 10 round. Um, are you guys enjoying today's live? I have a lot going on today. Is it too, is it too busy or are you guys enjoying all the stuff I'm throwing at you? I have, I have a whole lot. I wanted to share everything and I thought maybe I should save it for next week. And then I realized we're going to run out of time. Are you guys enjoying the extra stuff to show? Okay. So now I'm going to get, um, I should say, I should give you an emoji. Give me a purple flower. Is there a purple flower? Give me a purple flower if you are enjoying today's live. Okay. The last thing I want to do is add a darker layer of those um, kind of dripping vine thingies. I still haven't figured out what to call those. <laughs> but I'm just going to take my purple. I, I'm over here mixing colors and you guys can't see. Sorry. So here's some purple and I'm adding a little bit of blue to it. I'm just making it a little darker. I have yet, I have yet to go into my palette. So this is one of the things I love about watercolors is you can reactivate them, which basically just means you wet them again and they are now able to be used again. And you can reactivate them when they're on your palette, like <laughs> left over from a different day. And that's all I'm using today. I have not grabbed any new paint. And that is, if you're someone who likes to recycle or you like to be really, um, uh, you know, not wasteful. That is so cool. Like that's one of the things I love about watercolors. They just last and last and last. In fact, um, I used to like say, okay, I'm never going to buy another watercolor set until I use up the one I have, but it takes so long to use up a set that I finally decided, you know what? I don't know if I can use up a set before I'm ready to get a new one. So it's a really great, it's a great tool to have if you're wanting, if, especially if you're on a budget and you don't have a lot of um, extra money for, you know, supplies, the initial investment sometimes, depending on the level of watercolors you get can be, can be more, but they last forever. It's like such a long time. And then, you know, all you need is your paper, your paper and your brushes and the brushes last forever too. It's really great. Okay. So now I'm just doing little dots and bringing that little vine down. I'm also going to put a little bit of shadow between these flowers so I can differentiate them and then add some blue back into my purple again. I'm going to see how far I can get with just the colors on this palette that are over here. And then just pull this down. So I'm just dotting this. Um, the girl who's going to be teaching the class that I'm about to announce, she is actually the one who says um, the phrase I'm about to say, she is the person that I got that from. And sh what she says whenever she's doing art that has a bunch of dots on it, she goes, my daddy always says I'm such a good daughter. <laughs> and that's where I got that from. So I'm excited that she's going to be joining us because she is really, really talented and you will enjoy her teaching style. She's very, very, very talented lady. I really enjoy her and a good friend of mine. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit more of that dark. I'm just adding a little bit darker into the vines themselves. And I'm gonna just let these kind of be wobbly on the edges. I don't really want them to need to be perfect right there. So I'm just gonna let that be like that. And that'll finish up today's art journal page. I'm of course gonna add some journaling and date this as well. I might put something down here I haven't decided yet, but I love that super soft look. So I'm just gonna leave it just like that. But there is today's art journal page finished, today's painting. And if you like that, give that a thumbs up. I'd love to know what you think about that. This is a much softer painting 
than some of the others that we've done. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Terry gave a heart. Oh, she gave a purple heart and a red flower. So maybe there's not a purple flower available. You'll have to tell me. Okay. Last but not least, thank you guys for hanging in there with me. The last thing I want to show you is a preview of the class that's coming up. This is what I took a picture of and posted on my page, and I am so excited to share this with you. So coming up probably at the end of March, but it will depend on um, the interest. So you guys will have to let me know if you're interested in this. What I will say before I even show it to you is this is a upper intermediate class. So that just means it's going to be more difficult. In fact, um, uh, it's, I would call it, it more advanced. And so if you are susceptible to getting overwhelmed, this may not be the perfect class for you. But if you're looking for something to challenge you um, that could be really fun, this is a class that's coming up. So let me show you this journal. So spoiler alert, it's a journal and here is what it is. This is an art journal that I made with my friend, Shauna Staley. She's an amazing artist. Um, she's mostly a artisan. Like she makes a lot of things by hand. Um, but she has just recently gotten more and more into watercolors, which has been exciting for me because we've been talking watercolors back and forth. And as a result of that, she decided to make her own watercolor journal. Well, I've made some watercolor journals in the past before. You guys have seen those. I've done demos on them here live. But she took that one step further because she's incredible and she does a lot of things. And she taught me how to do, um, and I don't even remember if this is called Japanese bookbinding, but this is a ancient bookbinding technique. I don't know if it's Japanese or something else. She will tell you because she's fabulous. Um, but it is a ancient bookbinding technique. And you've probably seen it in craft stores or really, um, really, uh, just, just to say it really expensive craft, craft supply stores that sell handmade journals. This is the kind of journal that she's going to teach us how to make. And mine is not even done yet. Um, but I wanted to give you a glimpse of it. And let me go ahead and back the camera up so you guys can see a little bit more because it is super cool. It's super cool. So she taught me how to make this and she's going to teach all of us how to make these. And if you are interested in this class, please go ahead and um, let me know in the comments. Maybe write the word, um, write the word congrats in the comments. Congrats or congratulations. Um, because I'm super excited to get this class ready. And so just write the word congratulations in the comments. If you're interested in knowing about more about this class, that way I know who to be in touch with when we get all the details finalized, but we're looking at potentially the end of March. I just wanted to go ahead and give you guys like a preview of it so you can see it. So this journal actually is made with a canvas front and she showed me how to do this acrylic pouring technique. She's so versatile and talented. We won't be necessarily doing that technique. We're going to be focus on, focusing on making the journal itself. Um, and the cover can be a lot of different things. So it doesn't necessarily have to be um, canvas. But we'll be, we'll be talking about those kinds of things later on. I'll talk about supplies and stuff. Oh, good. Terry's interested. Bonnie's interested. Yay. Okay. So um, by the way, what I want, the reason I'm showing this to you today and the reason I'm showing it to you on the last day that the doors are open for the Artworthy Journal Club is because if you are a member of the Artworthy Journal Club, period, <laughs> if you are a member of the Artworthy Journal Club, whether you joined today or you've been a member for a long time, you automatically get free access to any online classes that I do. This is going to be an online class and this kind of class usually is um, because it's an, more of an advanced class or more of an, uh, an uh, upper intermediate class is usually a higher price range because I'm pulling in an artisan who is super talented to teach us. So the fact that you will get this free access to this class as an Artworthy Journal Club member is kind of like, I mean, it's sort of a no brainer. <laughs> you'll get this class for just $17 a month. When we when this class comes up, you'll get it for free. Um, <clears throat> That's that's access to the class itself. Materials are another story. But as far as access to the class, that's really, really cool. So I'm excited. So anyway, she showed me how to add this um, this paper to the front here and how to do this. But the cover is is not the um, the most critical part. Most critical part is making these really cool little um I think they're called leaves. Now, see, she's the teacher, not me. But anyway, they are or maybe they're called. Um, 
there's a word for it. Anyway, <laughs> each of these little things that go inside the journal. And this is watercolor paper. And look how flat this lays. I mean, if you've been art journaling for a while, you know the struggle of having like a spine in the center or having your journal not lay flat. Sometimes you're trying to do some journaling and it just doesn't lay flat. Look how gorgeous this journal opens up. It's so beautiful. And look how flat that is. I mean, it just, it's super flat. And I have tons of pages in here. The great thing about this is you decide how many pages you get. You decide how big you want your book to be. And then you can add as many as you need. And um, it, the technique does take a bit to just learn it, but it's really not super, super difficult. But what I would say is it's still, it's still, um, you know, a intermediate, uh, upper intermediate, closer to um, advanced class. So I just say that to, to let you know, you know, be patient with yourself and, um, and, and if it's something that you're like, oh, I'm getting overwhelmed with, just feel free to uh, take a breather. And by the way, if you're a member of the Artworthy Journal Club and you just automatically have free access anyway, you haven't lost anything. So you could take the class. And if you're like, you know, that wasn't really for me, it's fine. But this is going to be such a cool class to challenge you that I think it'll be really fun for a lot of you, especially those of you that are really good at um, picking up difficult things and uh, and working with them until you figure it out. You guys will really love this. You can see the back end of this journal isn't done yet. Look at this, this uh, last... I forget what these are called. It's like an insert, but I think it's called a leaf or something like that. Anyway, the last one is not attached yet, so I'm still tying this one on. Um, but we're going to add that to the end and then that will finish up this watercolor journal. And it's really, really cool because if I were to buy this watercolor journal on, um, Etsy or something like that, it could be 60 to $80 depending because the paper is so such high quality and the cover is really cool and the binding takes a while. Um, it actually doesn't take that long, but you know, it takes skill to know how to do it. So to have your own journal that you could make yourself is so fun. And what a cool, what a cool skill to have in addition to your art journaling ability. So let's see. Tammy says, you will also enjoy the journaling class too. Come and have fun with us. Yay, Tammy. Yeah. And I was just telling the ladies, um, if you're interested in a class like this, go ahead and put congrats or congratulations in the comments. Um, and that'll tell me that you're interested and I'll keep you in mind when this class is happening. Okay, so that's all I have to show you today. I'm just giving you a preview. The journal's not even done, as you can tell, but we are going to have a class with my friend, Shauna Staley. She's an incredible artist and um, has been been do creating for more than 40 years and she's so talented. So I'm super excited for her to come and share with us and it will be a super fun time. So leave the word congrats in the comments if you want to know more about that. And last but not least, this is the last day for you to join the Artworthy Journal Club. So join us if you're interested in getting deeper into the word of God using art on a daily basis. Alrighty guys, have a blessed day. I'm super excited. I get to go play in the snow. So I will talk to you all later. God bless you and have a super fun weekend. Hopefully it's warmer there than it is here. Bye guys. Have a great day.